Hello everyone, I'm Sarah, I'm the Real Simple Mama, and this is another exciting, informative episode of why do we have these dumb birds. <laughs> so what I'm going to be talking about today is chicken diversions, how to keep your chickens having fun, giving them some options to entertain them and keep them amused. No, I'm not talking about like hiring a magician or, you know, putting Netflix out in their coop or anything like that. But there are some actually legitimate reasons why you need to kind of make sure that your birds have something to do, that they are mentally, I mean, as mentally as a chicken can be, right? That they are mentally engaged, uh, that they have something to occupy their time, other than just, you know, destroying your yard and pooping on everything and not giving you eggs because they're molting. Um, so the reasons why you would want to have things for your chickens to do um, first of all, so that they're less destructive. I say less destructive because, I mean, it is what it is. Chickens are going to be destructive, right? They seem Gracie. And at worst, because chickens can actually become cannibalistic, they can start to eat eggs. Don't listen, Gracie. She's like, what? Why am I giving them to you? They can um, start to attack chicks, they can start to attack each other, and they can kind of turn into Lord of the Flies pretty quick if your chickens don't have anything to do. Um, now the other videos that I've got, you know, it talks about how much space you need for chickens, how to build your coop and keep it safe. I also have a lot of other videos that are specifically about chicken snacks, um, different things you can do when it's hot or when it's cold, um, healthy treats for them and things like that. Um, I'm going to talk about the treat thing first because it is also something that they can do but you don't want treats to be like any more than 10 or 20 percent at most of their total diet now that includes foraging right scrounging around and, and finding stuff in the dirt or wherever they are and it also includes of course whatever food you're giving them um, I do have a video as well on should you use crumble or pellets um, what they both look like why you might want to use one versus the other etc etc so as far as treats are concerned um just kind of like with your dog you know if you're going to be gone long hours or something like that you want to be thinking about something you can give them that's going to take a while right you don't want to give them something that's super easy like just put the treat on the ground for them to have um now it is halloween is tomorrow actually and we're really excited about it and for halloween of course there are lots of pumpkins pumpkins are an amazing treat for chickens as long as it is fresh they can eat the insides you can just give them a hollowed out jack-o-lantern like for us we bought four pumpkins the chickens are going to get at least well they'll get the the exterior part you know the the hold out part i guess of all four of them we're gonna take the guts out of a couple because we like roasted pumpkin seeds but the chickens will eat it all until like the skin of the pumpkin is literally like that thick they'll eat all of it and it's an amazing dewormer it helps them with worms and I'll do another video in a little while, but um, I found out that my Easter Eggers who were chilling over there under the pallet, they do have worms, which they probably had um, when I got them just a little while ago. So that's gonna be fun. So um, pumpkin or watermelon, something like that, um, is the easiest treat to give them, which is good because they can get a lot of nutrition out of it quickly, but it's bad because they're gonna go through it really quick. And so they're gonna get pumpkin staggered for the next week or two um, and then that's going to be the extent of the treats that they get no sunflower seeds no other kitchen scraps no nothing and that's it um, if you feel like your birds are starting to get fatter like this one I, I don't know what her deal is like she feeds the same as everybody else and she's just big my other Wyandotte was too um, or if their poop starts to get runny then that certainly means okay you've got you got too many treats going on other treat options though to give them something to do to work and you know here's my super sophisticated setup this is just a shepherd's hook you can get them at you know at Lowe's or Walmart or whatever and I've got two different options here the first is this is a little suet cage holder it opens like this these are really cheap they're less than five bucks at like tractor supply or whatever and I've got a mosquito trying to bite my finger God, I hate mosquitoes so much and so you can buy the pre-made blocks there are some that are just generic for songbirds and stuff there are some that are particularly made for chickens um, but something like this especially if it's hung up high your chicken has to work at it and they only get a little bit at a time see calypso's like like pavlov over here um, the other option if you're doing something like a head of lettuce a head of cabbage um, that you want to just hang up get one of these little screw hooks jam this into the bottom of it and then you can hang that as well and then it's like chicken tetherball 
So if you are going to give them a treat and that's the diversion, that's the, hey, keep you keep yourselves, you know, amused or whatever, um, then certainly try to make it something where they have to work for it a little bit. There are also treat balls you can buy that's like, you know, a plastic container that's got holes in it and the chickens have to peck it and like kick it around in order to get out. Whatever treats you put in there, mealworms or sunflower seeds or whatever. The problem with that is um, we bought one a long time ago and it lasted less than 24 hours and a squirrel hauled off the entire thing. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. So we're not buying any more of those. Um, but something like this, you know, it, for me, I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to bring it inside, you know, because if it gets wet, then it's ruined or anything like that. So we certainly go for cheap and we go for functional. You can make your own suet blocks as well. Hell, you can put just like your kitchen scraps in here and it's a more work for them to have to try to get it than just putting it on the ground and letting them free for all. So, you know, big chunks of all different kinds of vegetables. I stay away from fruit. I don't give them a lot of fruit because they don't really need it. Um, you know, you can do grain sparingly, leftover plain pasta. You want to stay away from any kind of salt. They don't need any kind of salt at all. They can handle seasonings. If it's a garlic seasoning, if it's a spicy seasoning, like crushed red pepper, cayenne chili powder, um, that helps with worms as well because the worms can't take the heat. Um, garlic is good for them, but nothing that's got salt on it, nothing that's got, you know, any kind of cheese or any kind of gross stuff like that and nothing that has onions. Onions are bad. And of course you want to stay away from giving them anything like, like moldy potatoes, um, you know, anything that's got mold on it or that has gone bad. Um, if it's a tomato that's been squished or something like that, that's totally fine. But I mean, don't give them anything that you feel is too far gone, please. So let's, let's do a little tour and I'll tell you some other things that you can do that are just things to help chickens to be. And again, this is for something for them to do other than just scratching around. Now we do have some, a little bit of, of branches and things like that. And I occasionally throw stuff out here. What's fun is that I move these around occasionally. I move around, don't want to go too fast on y'all. I move around this pallet as well so that they've got a different place to hide and kind of forage. And then once this mud clears up and I'm actually putting peat moss down, then I'm gonna be able to move this and then they'll have a new spot and then we kind of let the ground rest for a little bit. I've got another video about how to make a grazing box and my, you, why you might want to. Um, that's another option where you can put, there's wheatgrass in there right now. Um, I need to make a little bit of tweaks to the hardware cloth as you can see it's it's sagging right there, which is of course, you know, the reason why that area doesn't have nearly as much wheatgrass. But for five chickens, that box is self-sustaining and it's four feet by four feet. So anytime they want, the chickens can hop up there they can grab wheatgrass, but they can't pull it all the way out by the roots. And then, of course, their poop falls in there, and that's like free fertilizer. So, hooray. So, see, this ground over here is dried now. So, you can see Gracie Bird. Now, she's playing around in there. Now, chickens love to go foraging, to go hunting for stuff. It gives them something to do. Um, so, again, you know, if you've got an area where you can keep tall grass, if you've got an area where you, in the spring I'm going to plant probably something over here, bushes or canas or something that's a little bit taller than they are so they can feel like they're hiding and they're really foraging and you can, you know, almost like go hide stuff in there. The only thing to be aware of though, if you're giving them some, some foliage or some areas where they can go hide um, that's a little bit more dense, um, just keep in mind somebody may decide, hey, I'm going to lay all my eggs here and you may end up with like you know 20 eggs in one hidden little spot and if you've got roosters you may have hey surprise now there's chicks that have hatched and I didn't even know they existed so just keep that in mind like I've been sticking my head under there just to make sure there's no eggs back over there um, other chicken diversions you definitely definitely want to have a dust bath for your chickens at least one your chickens will make dust baths whether or not you give them one because they're destructive by nature but a dust bath is just dirt sand you can put diatomaceous earth in it which um, is like a food grade dust essentially that helps with worms and parasites and things like that um, but you want a dust bath because that's one way that they clean themselves and that's also how they help stay cool um, you know they don't lick themselves like cats they can't take baths like dogs do um, I mean you can bathe your chicken but that sounds like a nightmare um, so a dust bath is is a great way for them to keep cool to give them something to do they'll sunbathe which looks ridiculous because they lay on their side and stick their wing out like they just look absolutely stupid and it's hilarious so that's another great thing for them to do the only other thing you want to be aware of in the dust bath is it's going to rain on this and it has to stay open so you want to make sure the bottom of it is completely open something like an old tire works great um, an old kids swimming pool but again whatever it is you want to cut the bottom completely out and that way when it rains, you don't get like mold and nasty stuff like in the bottom of that. So make sure the rainwater can go straight through. As you'll see though, 
I continue to add dirt in this zone because I want the chickens to have a dry area in case we know we get tons of rain. We've had some some flooding and just insanity from hurricane season. And I don't know how well you can see, but there's a super low spot back there and a super low spot back there that's a good six or eight inches lower than um, how I mounded it in here to help control the water because they've just made their own dust baths in there too, little brats. So while we're down here though, this was a great idea from Animal Overload. Um, you can see those two mirrors that are hanging there. One I stepped on, so seven years of bad luck, which is why I have chickens. Um, but you can see that I just, I mean, I just hung them up with a zip tie. And it's, it's fascinating when the chickens kind of walk by and they catch themselves in the mirror and they're like, oh, I can't look away. I am so beautiful. And it's hilarious. Like I caught Gracie the other day, like sitting right here, just, just sitting kind of dust bathing, but like just looking at herself. And it was like, you brat. So that was hilarious. There are lots of other things that, you know, and I'm never here to tell you to buy stuff, but there are lots of other things that you can do. You know, I'm planting herbs in here. The peppermint kind of got smashed. That was just me putting it in a bad position. I got to put it somewhere else. Um, but you can build, if you if your coop is covered or you are confident that your birds can't escape, um, my run is kind of narrow and long, so I don't really have a good zone where I can build something tall because, you know, they can fly a couple of feet, even with clipped wings. But see, there they go, digging around. Um, but you could put, you know, uh, just even just an old ladder up and then put like some two by fours or whatever across it. So they've got like a little roost zone. There's all different kinds of things you can do for diversions. The reason I'm making this video now is not only have I added some stuff here and learned about some options, but as it gets close to winter and the chickens are all cold, that's a lot of the times when you can find them becoming cannibalistic. So you want to make sure they have plenty to do. Um, if you lock your chickens up when it's cold or if you're in an area where there's a ton of snow and so you feel like, you know, you, that you want to keep them locked up, you certainly don't have to. I have videos on winterizing your coop and learning about how chickens stay warm and all that kind of stuff. So you can learn about that over there. But if you feel like in your situation where you are that you need to keep them locked up, then you need to have things for your chickens to do inside. Of course, I would not keep mine locked up for days at a time. This coop is way too small. Um, for me to have five birds in there without them driving each other crazy, right? Cabin fever is real. So you want to make sure that you've got things for them to do if you're going to keep them locked up as well. I will say, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, do not put clothes on your birds. Do not put outfits on them or sweaters or hats or funny shoes. Now, if you've got a special needs bird and you need a diaper so your chicken can go in the house, that's totally different. That's a functionality thing. But um, don't think that that's part of keeping your chickens amused. They're coming. They're coming. Do not put clothes on them. Please, please, please. In the spring, I'm going to add a lot more diversions. I'm going to add another grazing box. Like I said, I'm going to add, you know, bushes or something over there. Um, even me just adding the sage over here that I had, they had so much fun, like, feeling like they were kind of hiding in the leaves. Of course, they've, like, stepped on it now and that plant is like help me but before when it was taller it was really cute to just see them feeling like can you see me can you see me and they were playing around in there again me being cheap and looking at what is old in my yard that I can use you can grab old grass clippings old leaves you know dead leaves things like that and just pile it up and your chickens will spend hours playing in it um, you can rake up the existing leaves and things that you have and I mean just just make things different You know kind of freak them out or, or you know, not literally but make them think like oh my gosh something's new something changed I don't know what changed what changed. This is cool. This is new and exciting because you want them to be stimulated You want them to have things to do Some other diversion ideas that I don't have but I've seen and again I'm not the kind of person to tell you you need to go buy this and you should go buy this but I also am just a little bit obsessed. So sometimes it's it's the balance of, you know, I, but I want this for my chickens. My chickens need this. And the thing that I'm after right now is a chicken swing. Yes, it's ridiculous. No, I don't care. <laughs> and it's essentially, I mean, you can make one too, I'm sure. But it's basically a roost that you hang from two, you know, two ropes or two swings or whatever. And they can swing on it. So just things for them to do other than just start to annoy each other. I mean, if you've, if you've got kids or if you have siblings, I mean, you know how it is. Like, everybody gets bored and they all start picking on each other and they start being whiny and everybody's annoying and they ask every five minutes, are we there yet? You know, and that kind of thing. And so, again, at, at best, 
you're giving your chicken something to do to help them be happy and healthy. And again, I said men mentally stimulating, but you know, we're dealing with a chicken, so it's a very limited scope. That'd be a short conversation. Um, but the other thing is, especially as it gets cold or if there's a ton of rain or especially whatever weather, when your chickens are either less active or they have to stay locked up, that is certainly going to make them be more apt to be destructive or to harm each other. And again, I mean, if you train, or not train deliberately, but if your chickens figure out that they can eat eggs, you are in a whole bunch of trouble because you're gonna have to untrain those birds. And it's kind of like if one figures it out, they're all gonna see and they're all gonna figure it out. If one learns or if one decides, hey, I'm gonna peck on this bird over here, I'm gonna pick on them, then everybody's gonna follow suit and then you've got a huge problem. So I know it sounds kind of ridiculous that I'm getting on here and talking about chicken swings and dust baths and thinking about their level of happiness and you know, have they been mentally stimulated today? But I mean, truly, you really do need to give them something to do. But again, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, you can, you can fill pots with dirt and put it in here and let them like dig around in it and stuff. Um, again, treats are an option, but don't let that be the only thing you do. Like five birds do not need a, a half of a watermelon every day. Um, the pumpkin, I'm actually, if anybody knows about this, put it in the comments. I'm gonna try to wrap some of the pumpkins like in big chunks um, and see if, like after it's hollowed out, if I can freeze the pumpkin and then let them have it. I've never frozen like big chunks of raw pumpkin before. I don't know how it would work. Um, but you know, I don't want it to go to waste, but they also don't need four pumpkins at a time. So, you know, you can put plants in here that they will destroy. You know, you can let them have it. It'll give them something to do, but they can destroy that. Um, there's other things, you know, and we're not talking about like physical exercise per se. Certainly most chickens, they, you know, they'll, they'll keep their, their beaks trimmed and their claws trimmed just from doing chicken stuff. Lacey, we had to cut her nails when we first got her. For some reason, her nails were really overgrown and she was, um, her toes were getting deformed because they, of how they had to lay on the ground. But I mean, other than that, you know, we're not even talking about anything like that for exercise. It's just, they need to have options of things to do different activities, different stuff that they can do. And I mean, you, you know chickens, they're like little tourists, right? Like they'll be all be over here for a while and then they'll say, ooh, over here. It's like a Monty Python cartoon. And then they all come over and hang out and do something over here. And then they all come over here and do whatever. So you wanna have different zones for them to do, you know, dust bathing, for them to forage, for them to play around in the shade. Certainly their food and water needs to be available all the time. Certainly they need shelter all the time. But let me know in the comments what you do as far as chicken diversions to keep them entertained, to give them things to do. Again, you know, chicken tetherball. There's there's a whole bunch of, of different options. You can build roosts outside. Um, you know, my mind is going blank on any other options. But as we get money, and as it goes into the spring, like I'm not gonna bother planting anything else out here right now, but as it gets into the spring, then, um, you know, I want to have another grazing box. I'll find some poor sad plants that are on sale and plant them there along that edge. Um, the peat moss that's right here is supposed to be really, really great for absorbing water and putting a layer of it over, you know, an area, particularly an area that might get muddy. And everybody in the local chicken farm is raving about it. And I believe that is three cubic feet that we just got at Lowe's. We're in South Texas and I think each of those was 12 bucks. Um, you can maybe get it cheaper online, you know, if you've got a place that's free shipping, you can look at Walmart, other places like that. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So that's a project for this weekend to get peat moss, at least over this like mud pit that's over here and see if that helps. And then that'll be something new for them to do. It's totally safe for them. Right, girls? There's other things you can do too, as far as growing sprouts, you can, um, you know, grow and propagate your own mealworms in a separate location, you know, like inside or in the garage and you bring them out. I mean, it, it can get kind of ridiculous. You know, you can fall into the, the rabbit hole of Pinterest, as my friend Marie says, you can fall into the rabbit hole if you start looking for, you know, chicken toys and things to amuse chickens and chicken diversions. I just like that word because the crab says it in Moana. So that's why I always say it funny, diversions. So anyway, now I'm just rambling. So um, let me know what comments you have, what suggestions you have. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is just really cheap, easy stuff. And then of course there's more that I wanna add. Um, the mister is another thing that we've got going on. You know, the chicken mirrors. 
Um, you can get little kids like ORF instruments, like little keyboards, little glockenspiels and hang those up. I mean, like it can get kind of crazy. So let me know what, what you do, what you think. Look at these birds. But I'm just so happy to be out here. We've been so busy. I haven't got to spend a lot of quality time with my chickens. <laughs> and Flopsy goes, ha! Ah! But I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. I'm always here to help, just to give you options. Let me know what you're doing, what you think, what if, I mean, if there's a product that you bought that you recommend, if there's something that you made. Um, remember, you cannot upload pictures onto YouTube in the comments, um, but I'll put my email address down here. You can always email me, my husband, and I check the email address. And, <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.